This is Play Coup, 250 miles north of Saigon, the air base that was ripped by Vietnamese communist guerrillas. Eight Americans died in the attack that brought swift retaliation by U.S. and South Vietnamese forces. From carriers and land bases, 49 jets struck back at staging areas just across the border in North Vietnam. The Red guerrillas were able to slip by Vietnamese guards in the middle of the night raid and lob mortar shells into the area while hand-carried bombs were placed under aircraft and against barrack walls. Why security was so lax is the object of two investigations. Although some officers say full protection against such attacks is impossible in this jungle war, there is mute evidence of the toll the guerrillas took here. First official word of the retaliatory attacks comes from Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara in a briefing for newsmen. The map shows the relative position of three carriers attached to the 7th Fleet, as well as the three U.S. bases that were hit by the Viet Cong. This is what followed. Immediately following the attack, U.S. representatives in Saigon met with representatives of the South Vietnamese government. They jointly agreed that joint retaliatory action was required. The president's approval of this action was given after the action was discussed with and recommended by the National Security Council at a meeting held between 7.45 p.m. and 9 p.m. last night. Mr. McNamara said that the raiding U.S. jets hit Dong Hoi barracks, where most red troops are equipped for their forays to the south. In the first raid, land-based planes were forced back by the weather, but the carrier jets completed their strike with the loss of one American plane. Later, photo reconnaissance flights proved that much of the staging area had been completely destroyed. The confrontation between the Reds and the West was the most critical since the Gulf of Tonkin incident last summer, when the U.S. replied just as swiftly to North Vietnam PT boat attacks. The second raid came the next day, when the South Vietnamese pilots struck anew at bases across the border. Here again, a successful mission was carried out as the Red Communication Center at Vinh Lin was bombed and strafed. Both Bay Ping and Moscow were slow to comment on these retaliatory raids. Finally, they both promised to back the North Vietnamese regime. Asian reaction, however, was that the two Red Powers had lost face in the East-West showdown. To bolster defenses in South Vietnam, a Hawk ground-to-air missile unit has gone on duty. Meanwhile, President Johnson's special assistant for security affairs, McGeorge Bundy, arrives at the scene of the Viet Cong raid. He was in Vietnam on a mission for the president when the attacks took place, and he holds a battlefront conference with Lieutenant General Khan before returning to Washington. While he conferred with Vietnamese officials, the National Security Council was meeting in Washington. It was these meetings that brought the swift decision to strike back at the Viet Cong to re-emphasize our resolve to continue to defend the cause of freedom in Southeast Asia. Before leaving for home, Mr. Bundy flew to the 8th Field Hospital to visit the men wounded in the guerrilla attack. 108 men were wounded, 79 of them seriously. Mr. Bundy was to say later that he found morale high among the men, a factor that the president says our enemies always underestimate. Mr. Bundy arrives back in Washington the next day, and he immediately goes into conference with the president and the Security Council. He tells reporters that he found political and religious factions in Vietnam united in their belief that the Viet Cong is their common enemy. When we had an opportunity to talk frankly and freely uh, with them. They again emphasized uh, the overriding importance in South Vietnam of the contest against the communists. They emphasized, as the political leaders had done, the importance and their own dedication to, uh, the importance of and their dedication to the task of forming a stable and effective political society under a stable and effective government uh, in that country, uh, a view which, of course, uh, we share. And uh, I think it's fair to say that uh, the Americans in Vietnam are in very good heart and are prepared to continue even against this kind of danger and this kind of sneak attack. Let me say one more thing about that uh, sneak attack, that in a war of this kind in which uh, there are no fixed lines, 
in which there are large territories that are lightly inhabited and that are essentially jungle and mountainous in character. Uh, I know no military man who believes that with, without an overwhelming assignment of local defense forces, it is possible to guarantee against this kind of sneak attack. Uh, this is the sort of thing, and all Americans in the area know it, uh, with which we simply have to contend while we prosecute in uh, company with the government and people of South Vietnam a contest against communism which is of the highest importance to our uh, national interest.